the next question I have for you is when it comes to new runners, um, how, and maybe not even new runners, but people who want to do a marathon for the first time, how much time do you need to run before running kind of your first marathon? What's the minimum amount of running someone might need to be ready for one? This is a good question. Um, there are a lot of, I want to say just variations between people about how much, running an individual is going to be able to healthily tolerate in and how much time it takes them to build up to a certain volume. Okay. So when I said at the beginning of this episode, then the first six months don't do what I did, but I ended up running a marathon six months after I started running. Um, I am a very durable runner. I do not get injured easily. Right. Um, I have a genetic uh, predisposition towards endurance sports from my parents, Mm -hmm. and I did get injured. I got IT band syndrome, right? So I didn't come out of this unscathed. Having run four other marathons at this point, I will say there is no substitute for being well-prepared and being well-trained. So although you may be able to finish a marathon on low volume or truncated training, I would still recommend that you respect the distance and take the time to build up to the distance properly. So if you are a runner who is, let's say you have a comfortable base of around 20 miles a week, you, you know, you've raced a couple half marathons before, maybe in training, you've gotten to 30 to 35 miles per week. You would probably be able to train for a marathon in four to five months. If you are a new runner, if you are coming off the couch, if you have run no farther than three miles at any given time, I would recommend that you take probably four or five months just to build your base before you even th- start thinking about training for a marathon. And I, it's mm-hmm. also very important for you to understand, and this goes for everybody, experienced and non-experienced, is that um, the type of training that you're doing needs to be in line with what you're trying to achieve on race day. So if you are a newer runner or you're a low volume runner and you are running your very first marathon, you are likely to be finishing a a just finish or I call them finish strong style plan. It is basically entirely volume building. The only focus is building your endurance. There are no workouts, right? We are just trying to get you from the start to the finish. If you are expecting to run a crazy fast result following that kind of plan, um, you are probably going to have a, 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 how we say, a mismatched experience of your expectation versus reality. You are likely mm-hmm. to go out way too fast on race day. You're probably going to hit the wall. You're probably going to be in real pain by the end. But if you're, if you are okay with just finishing strong, you're going to have a good race day experience. As you become more experienced in racing any of these distances, you're going to be able to tolerate more training, right? So you're giving yourself proper recovery time between races and with all your training. Um, but all this to say is that I'd really, really, really like you to respect the distance Give yourself time to train properly and always make sure that your experience and the training plan that you are following based on your current fitness is in line with what you are trying to achieve on race day. Now, if somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm running, I'm a moderate volume runner. I've been running 40 to 45 miles per week for a couple of years, you know, run a couple of marathons. I want to hit a huge PR out of the park. I'd say, okay, cool. Do you have time to train? the way that you would need to in order to hit these PRs out of the park over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months. And they say, no. And I say, you need to revise what your goals are, right? So Mm -hmm. it's not just about what you can currently handle with your, with your body, but how much time do you have to allocate towards the pursuit of this goal? Yep. And that's, I think that's a big part of, and I would say that's a huge service to the people you work with. Because if you kind of like drag them along on this goal that they have that isn't something that would be wise or reasonable, um, it's better to face kind of how this process works up front um, and and work with people on that to set reasonable expectations so that you don't just get disappointed um, week after week after week. And you're like, I need to be, and then you're like, I need to be here, you know, and expectations-based training is really, really brutal.